Uh huh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sims History Channel, where we do experiments on Sims because running them on humans is usually illegal. Today, we are finishing up our recreation of the social network of early modern France. We're going to look briefly at factions and at salons and at guilds. So let's begin with factions. And we're going to begin with the faction of Anne of Austria. Anne is Louis XIV's mom, and I have, oops, let's look at Anne's list of factions. Oh, Anne, where have you gone? There she goes. Uh, Anne's faction is made up of all the people that uh, will come and do stuff for her whenever she needs it done. These are also people that she would give favors to. And at the way that France was organized, every member of the royal family actually had a faction depending on them. So there's Anne's faction, there's Mazarin's faction, right? Uh, there's even factions for the boys. Uh, Louis has a little faction of his own, which I'm limiting to children right now, and so does Philippe, but his is limited to children and a couple of teenagers. Um, so all of the members of the royal family have their own factions, and that is to represent the way that France was arranged kind of in pyramids, uh, social pyramids going down from the very top of society all the way to the bottom. Anne has followers that she can call on, and they have followers that they can call on, and they have followers that they can call on, or they would have in early modern France. Here I've made it actually only a two-level system. So Anne's followers are all the Lawrence family. Actually, the Lawrence family are a set of nobles that I've created, and I apologize for the fact that they're in their uh, knightly uniform, the men are. Uh, so the Lawrences are a family, and because they're nobles, they actually do have their own onhangers, their own um, peasants that are part of their faction. And the peasants are not directly connected to Anne, but because they're part of the Lawrences' own little family pyramid, they can be moved around by Anne. And as you see, Anne's faction, um, they are, you know, tasked to be friendly with Anne, I've got them doing meditation as a sort of representation of the traditional piety expected of Renaissance queens, doing spa activities because I thought that would be fun, trying on outfits because it's the court, heck, that's what you got to do, and dancing because everybody dances at the royal court. The boys' tasks I've actually made more specialized. So Louis, uh, he, w he loved dancing, so I've still got him doing that. He was very active, so I've still got him doing active stuff, working out and doing yoga and diving off the, off the platform, because there's like no horseback riding. And then there's looking at art. And he, he has a couple of little girls in his faction right now. Now, the other things that we're going to look at are guilds and um, the salonniers. So if you've got the idea here, Let's move on. So the next faction that I want to introduce you to is the guild, that is the next club. And there are in this guild five members, of course they're all men, this is a medieval guild, it's a medieval workman's guild, and uh, they do not include women. Uh, in the early modern period. In the medieval era, there were still a few, but by the 17th century, it's an all-male thing to be part of a guild. Uh, all of the guild members are going to be woodworkers for now, and uh, sort of making sculpture. Since I'm only just starting with this guild, I'm allowing them to be uh, uh, relatively unskilled at work woodworking. They've only got to have uh, two plus skill to uh, work in the guild, but later on we'll add that, we'll make that much higher because of course being a member of a guild was a great privilege. Now this is the one of the groups that, well, this is a group that does not have any official allegiances except within the guild. Individual members might be members of a faction. Um, in fact, they probably are, they and their households, and they might be 
uh, part even of the peasant men group, if, depending on their household background. But the guilds are actually independent political powers in and of themselves, and in general sided only with the cities that they were in, or with the other guild members. Kind of actually like the individual um, orders of monks and nuns in the church. And uh, you might want to go look at the Ursulines group, the um, uh, girls' education in the 17th century videos, to see a little bit more about um, the sisters. Next up, I know I'm just running through these little groups as fast as I can, the next group is the Salonniers, and we'll be back in just a minute with them. And so the fi final faction that I'm going to introduce to you are the Salonniers, and in this version of my game, they are headed up by the Marquise de Ramboli, Bolette, I'm not actually sure how to pronounce that. This woman was a real person. Uh, she wasn't uh, quite as African descended as this image looks, but, um, you know, in order to give my sims some variety so you can tell them apart, I have been giving them uh, as large a variety of skin colors as possible. So, the, uh, the Salonniers, oh, look at this, please change into your... Friendly, yes. Ask to see outfit formal. Let's do that. Come on. This is my little sim self in this game, Professor Lilith. Oh dear. There we go. A much better, much more uh, period friendly outfit. So the Salonniers were groups of, well, they were actually individual women who ran intellectual clubs. They had salons, right? They would meet in the big room of their house, and they of their own home, and they would encourage people to have lovely conversation, but also to the practice of the arts, and they would introduce to artists, to patrons, and to other artists, and to other writers. Um, they became the uh, kind of... the they became celebrities in a way, not the way modern celebrities are, because it wasn't so much about the salonier, the hostess herself, but about the atmosphere that she created. And Marquise, this, the Marquise de Rambolet, was the one who created the first. Uh, so, uh, the first one in France. And so I have given her the honor in the game of being the head of the salonniers. And here are the people who are in them. Uh, this Calen Ritchie is one of my nobles. Uh, this me, haha, <laughs> I've put in there because what, what, what else would I like to do? This fellow Bjorn, I'm not quite sure how he got in there. I don't think I invited him. Uh, and then we have actually Rose uh, is one of the peasants, but she is uh, an intellectual person interested in all, she's a renaissance sim, and so she came to the notice of one of the other salonniers and entered. And then I have another uh, more typical salonier, a noble, noble woman named Natalie. So the salonniers, they also, you know, their goal is to view art, listen to music, uh, be friendly with each other, read, be funny with the other salonniers, uh, they're not allowed to fight, and they're not allowed to sabotage objects. Um, and, you know, it's not so much that they should be doing art at the moment that they are gathered together, as it is that they should be uh, talking about and thinking about art. Huh. Now this is really quite unacceptable. We're going to have to get uh, some of this fixed. Replace. There we go. And the Marquis certainly could have afforded that in real life. Now, I apologize. I haven't got them in a terribly period-colored place. I haven't had a I've gotten almost everybody's clothes, period, but getting the houses to be all period, whew, that is another giant. So now that we've got everybody, we've got the royals, we've got the royal factions, we've got peasant families, we've got salonniers, we have uh, the various guilds, all we really need is to add the church into the mix. And actually, we've already got a group that does that. I haven't put the Earthlings into a club yet, but I will. And those church clubs, those church groups, are actually really important because every different 
uh, order of the church, whether it was the Ursulines or the Benedictines or the Jesuits, had their own internal organization, and they were all kind of in competition with the other groups. Uh, some groups more in competition than others. So the mix of different competing interests in early modern France is actually very complex. Um, but now, Get Together has allowed us to put that mix together. So, and so now, in future episodes, we can really begin experiments with French society. I'm going to install a mod that allows the Sims to develop relationships and jobs and skills, even while I'm not looking. It's called MC Command Center. And I'm going to play rotationally so that we can see from one household to the next how that story progression and these clubs, these various factions, impact French society in this simulation.